are here to actually provide all the support to develop students to become a confident graduate that is needed by the industry. Please feel welcome to visit us to see how we do our transformation of students. Hi, and a very good afternoon to all the audience who have joined us on our social media platform. Today's talk will be addressing on how to teach children to deal with naughty ends or auto, uh, sorry, automatic negative thoughts by using CBT principles. Today, we have Dato Dr. Lai Fenghua and Dati Indrani Liu to share on the topics with us. Dato Dr. Lai is a consultant of child and adolescent psychiatrist at Island Hospital, Penang, and Dati Indrani is his wife. She is a UK and IGCSE curriculum consultant, as well as a behavior management and teacher's trainer. We are honored to have them to share on this topic with all of us. So without further ado, I shall pass it over to Dr. Lai and Dati Indrani. Hi, Dr. Lai and Dati Indrani. Hello. Yeah, pass the time to, all, to both of you. Yeah, yeah. Can you show the slide, please? Okay, sure. Thank you. Right. An adventure to catch naughty ants. Suppose, uh, <coughs> suppose I get a child, a child with an uh, anger problem, right? And uh, Let's say if the mother comes and, and brings her to see me, what will I do with her first? So next. I, I wouldn't go in straight and ask her, why are you so angry? I usually start by talking to her and asking her about things that she likes. What's your name? What's your favorite food? What about your, your favorite toy? Okay, what you like to do the most was your pastime. Which subject is your favorite subject in school? Do you have a best friend? What's his name? Okay, and now if you can have one wish. Okay, so just just imagine yourself going back in time, and you are you are back when you were in your primary school age. How will you answer this? Some of these questions. Okay, if you have a piece of paper or if in your own thoughts, just try and answer this question in your mind. So suppose you were a nine-year-old again. Usually when, when, a uh, when I see a child and I ask them these questions, they, they usually start talking okay because these are these are safe topics these are not topics that question their behavior these are things that ask about what they like what they enjoy doing uh, i especially like the last question what is their wish because very very rarely children get asked this question what do you wish for because adults usually have no time for children and uh, all they hear from adults is do your homework, don't use so much computer games, or don't play so much computer games, don't use so much uh, phone. Adults don't stay, sit down and ask them what, what, what would you like, what are the things you wish for, right? So they, they are usually quite happy when I ask them these questions. Next. Family, the child's world and his or her five-star rating. The new thing I learned recently um, uh, is to, to draw a genogram. Uh, those of you who do not know what is a genogram, it's actually a family tree uh, with squares standing for male and 
circle for female and I usually draw it in three generations and 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 I ask the child you know uh, about their siblings, their parents, their uncle aunties, grandparents. Let me just explain here. So this is the genogram. There's a double circle here. This is the I this is the patient or client. Okay. And uh, the plan is a female because it's a circle. So this girl has three sisters, no brother. This is the mother and this is the father. And here you have the mother's family. So this is the grandfather. This is the grandmother. These are the these two girls are their mother's sister. So these are the auntie. Over here is the father. Okay. We go up his family tree and we see this is his father, this is his mother, and all right, he has three, one, two, and himself. Huh? There are three boys and one girl in the father's family. So these children here, okay, have one, two, three, four, what? Five aunties and uncles. And they have two sets of grandparents. A new technique I learned recently from Professor Mauricio and Dolphy is to, is to ask the child to give stars for for her family members, you know, hotels have stars, five stars, four stars, three stars. So, so I ask the child, who will you give five stars in your family? And usually they'll say my parents or, or my brothers or sisters or uh, grandmother. And then what about four stars and three stars? And uh, one good thing about this is you you start to know who who are the people in the family that are closer to her or who are more important to her. This one will be useful later when we talk about how to handle uh, automatic negative thoughts, right? Right, okay. The girl with the anger problem. Okay. And after doing these two uh, activities, one of the things that help is it helps to take away the automatic negative thoughts from ourselves as uh, counselors, as therapists, as people who want to help the child. Usually when we hear, hear uh, the problem of a child that is uh, brought to see us, the problem, uh, the, the, the girl with the anger problem, which one do we focus on? We tend to focus on the problem, right? We start to think about ang anger problem. Okay, what do people with anger problem do? Uh, they are usually uh, aggressive. They usually hit people. They usually throw things. So we focus on the problem. But after doing the first two exercises, who do you look at? What do you focus on? You start to focus on the girl, right? Here is a girl who likes certain things, who, who plays with certain toys, who has certain wishes. Here is a girl who, whose most important person is her grandmother. So, so it helps us to, to see the girl in a different light. We no longer see the problem as the most important issue. We see the girl first. And when we do that, the child will also feel the same. The child will start feeling that this, this adult is looking at me as a person. He no longer looks at me just as a problem to solve. And it, it helps a lot with trust. It helps a lot with her accepting you as a helper. Yeah. Next. Can you tell me what you think is worrying your mom? Okay. So once I get her to a... Uh, a trusting position, she's starting to talk to me about her toys. I, then I can ask her, you know, what what what, what brings you here or, or what, what do you think is troubling, is worrying your mom and your dad or your teacher? Can you can you tell me that? So so we don't we don't jump and say, why are you so angry? Or why didn't you do your homework? Or why didn't you go to school? So so don't don't 
don't uh, start with a judgmental kind of approach. Ask them to tell you what, what worries your mother, what worries your teachers. Why do you think they, they ask you to come see me? Next. Okay. Um, when, when we talk about CBT and automatic negative thoughts, we, we first have to look at what ha really happened. Okay, what, what is the thing that uh, happens when, let's say, the child is angry or when, when she throw things? What, what actually happened uh, that brought about this? So we look at the situation. Okay, this, this is actually a, 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 a four, a nine part kind of uh, storytelling board. You can easily uh, make one of these. Uh, you can take a A4 size paper and fold it into nine boxes, three rows and three columns. And then I ask the child, "Have you? Do you like uh, reading comics?" Then they may tell you yes. Uh, or no, doesn't matter. Then I'll tell tell her, I, I'd like you to draw me a comic strip of uh, what happened the other day when you threw the chair in your classroom, right? Can you throw for me? Uh, can you draw for me? So in the center, it will be when you throw the chair. So draw for me what happened before that, you know? Who do you talk to? What happened? And then what how do you get angry? And then in the middle, you threw the chair. And then after you threw the chair, then what, what do you do? Okay, what happened? Who came? So just, just use stick figures and, and draw the sequence of events. Uh, usually, children are quite happy to draw and, and give them time to draw. And once they start drawing, once they finish, then you ask them, tell me the story using this, this picture. Okay. Um, so this is this is the starting point for for uh, catching the end in in CBT. Right. Next. Next, young children tend to blame themselves for bad things that happen at home. When we talk about automatic negative thoughts in children, um, children, especially primary school children or even younger, uh, you need to remember that many of them still have a lot of magical thinking and they are quite uh, self-centered. And young children tend to have this belief that when things go wrong, it's my fault. When they see their mom, their mom crying, oh, I must have done something to make mommy cry. When parents divorce, I must have done something naughty that, that uh, caused my, my daddy to leave home. So children tend to blame themselves a lot for, for bad things that happen. So, so keep this in mind, okay? Um, when they tell you what happened and so, so, so if they tell you that, that uh, uh, mom got so, uh, so upset, she started crying and then and then she got angry and took the chair and threw it on the floor. You can ask her, do, do you feel that you, you caused mommy to cry? Then she may nod her head. Okay. So uh, you can ask questions like this. Next. Teenagers tend to see things in black and white. Okay. Okay. Talking about teenagers, so children and teenagers. A little bit different when teenagers uh, you can ask the teenagers to draw the same same situation they can do similar drawing and teenagers especially you need to tell them uh, don't have to be very beautiful drawing because teenagers tend to uh, be very sensitive to criticism so 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 tell the teenager it's okay if, if the drawing doesn't look nice all i want is the story so, so tell the teacher, uh, teenager, just do your best. Um, but what, what, what you often see in teenager is they, they tend to see things in black and white. So if, uh, if a person don't smile at them, they may tell you that 
Oh, he hates me. Why? Because he doesn't smile at me. So, for black and white thinking is they either love me or they hate me. There is no in between. But for us adults, we know lah. When people don't smile at you, doesn't mean they hate you. It is just they 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 may not be having a good day. But but teenagers tend to have this jumping to conclusion kind of thing. So so just bear in mind some of these uh, things that often happen in teenagers. Emotion, the highway to thought. Aaron Beck. Okay. Uh, Aaron T. Beck is the famous person who started CBT long ago, 1960s. Um, he wrote a famous book called Cognitive Therapy for Depression, which I learned a lot from. Um, so for him, he, he says emotion is the highway to thoughts. When we want to look for Negative thoughts is quite difficult because the thoughts tend to be subconscious. The person or the child may not realize that there is a thought there. And how to look for it? You, you go first for the emotion. Emotion is easier to catch. Right? When a child is angry, you can see. Or when a child is sad, you can see. So go straight for the emotion and then using the emotion ask for the thought so when when in the picture just now if a child draws a crying face then you ask the child okay you, you draw a crying face how do you feel at this point so the child may say i feel very sad then okay then you say what what what's going through your mind when you were see, feeling sad what were you thinking about so from emotion you you start to link up to what they are thinking okay next right children need be, need to know how to recognize and name emotions okay so this is all right a uh, lovely very colorful photo with real children and the words are there, yeah, happy, scared, sad, angry, excited, surprised, nervous, embarrassed. So children need to learn how to name their emotions. And uh, uh, in first world countries, children are taught this as part of social and emotional learning, where the children learn about their emotions. They learn how to regulate or control their emotions as well. Next. um you are looking at emotional thermometers all right okay uh, after we after we we teach children about emotions uh angry sad uh then then we can teach them a second thing which is to rate their emotion how strong is those emotion so for older children or teenagers you can give them numbers usually it's zero to ten uh in technical the technical word for it is SUD, subjective unit of distress. Uh, otherwise, you, you just ask them, okay, between zero and 10, 10 being the strongest emotion and zero, no emotion. How, how worried do you feel or how anxious were you when you were sitting in front of the computer attending your, your class? Okay. So they can, they can tell you oh, five, six, seven, so, so they'll give you a number. For younger children, numbers may be a bit more difficult. So you use colors. So you get a thermometer, you color it, uh, maybe blue for cool feelings and red for strong, uh, angry feelings. Next, please. Um, one, more. Uh, one more, please. No, 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 go up. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, these are, these are the uh, characters from the animated movie Inside Out, all right? And they are color-coded. Eh? So joy is yellow, sadness is blue, anger is red, surprise is pink, disgust green, and fear is sort of like purple or lilac. And uh, I actually do use this 
to teach children about their emotions, how to identify their emotions. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. Uh, sorry. Can you go back one up? Yeah. Uh, one more. Ah, uh, here. Oh, no. So if you look at these feelings thermometers, all you need to do is make sure that you have one to ten. I'm looking at the right one to ten. Okay. And actually, the feelings thermometer can be used to, all right, identify or to measure many emotions happiness sadness anger worry okay tiredness and annoyance so in the in the comic strip uh, that i asked the child to draw just now i can ask them to uh, put a number for every in every picture that you drew so at that particular scenario what what was your feeling how strong was your feeling so every picture will have a number to indicate how how upset he felt. Uh, let me give an example. Just say that the child has been uh, traumatized because was chased and bitten by a dog. So we ask the child to draw that nine box uh, story. Okay. Then after that, we ask, look at the right here. All right. For every box, every scene, we ask the child to give us a number to, that is to measure how, all right, uh, terrified they were. So the first scene is the girl gets off the school bus, box one. So uh, will be one most probably. Okay. The next scene, all right, two, three scenes down, the dog, all right, has come out of the house and is walking towards her. So now she's maybe at four or five. Then the dog chases her. She'll probably be eight. Okay. Eight, nine, bites her, ten. Okay. Next. Uh, next again. Right. Um, can, we can teach children to identify their feelings using their body as a thermometer. Okay. We can ask them to use different colors to show which parts of their bodies, okay, feel different when they are upset and then here is an example all right of a figure that has been that has colored uh paint on it uh, to show that these are the figures uh areas that feel discomfort and over here you've got a you've got a figure again and down by the side uh, you have crying sweaty palms heart pounding okay hair stands up Okay, the knees start knocking and wobbling, okay, and your stomach feels funny. Okay, so then we just ask the child which to indicate which do they, do they feel, and they can just draw an arrow to indicate. Next. Here, okay, right. Identifying, all right their, uh, what do you call that, reaction to anger. What do you do? Do you yell and scream? Circle. You throw things, you circle. Slam doors, okay? Use bad words, kick the door, kick the chair, kick the table. So what, yeah, this is, this worksheet actually helps to uh, help the child and the uh, therapist to so identify which are some of the behaviors which obviously will are not uh they are not uh not socially acceptable as well as unhelpful next here again teaching all right these are different parts of your body that can that can feel funny when you're angry and here you're asking okay which parts of the funny but which are sorry which part of the body feels different and then here when i get mad i will okay so what will you do instead when i get mad i will count to 20 maybe when i get mad i can drink a glass of cold water okay and what's the last one uh i can take deep breaths so what's happening is that identifying the anger and then all right uh, teaching acceptable alternatives. Okay, next. 
cognitive triad. Yeah. Okay, this is the cognitive triad. Whenever we talk about CBT, usually you will see this triangle. Uh, it is the link between thoughts, feelings, and emo uh, thoughts, emotions, and behavior. Okay, so we, we talked about, so we, we, we actually uh, teach the child, teach children about emotions, about behavior, and then we can draw this triangle. And, and we, the thing to tell them is actually our behavior and our emotions and our thoughts are all linked up together. So example, if a girl uh, likes to pull her hair whenever she gets stressed, okay? Nowadays, there are girls who pull her hair when they are stressed. That's the behavior. That's the behavior. And then we can ask her, okay, when you pull your hair, what, what do you feel? I feel so stressed. I feel so stressed with work, with classes. And then what goes through your mind when you feel stressed? I feel stressed. So is it, I think of all the homework I need to do, which I haven't done. Or when I, when I attend the Zoom, Zoom uh, class. class online, every, all my classmates can answer the question that the teacher asked, but I can't. So I feel stupid. So, so, so that is the thought, okay? The thought makes them feel upset. And when they're upset, they pull their hair. Or other girls will, will nowadays they like to, to scratch themselves or cut themselves uh, as a form of, uh, as a way of ex uh, releasing tension. Okay, next. Locating the ends. Ends are automatic negative thoughts. So, what was going through your mind when? Okay. So, when we get the behavior, when we get the emotions, then we can locate the, the, the thought. Okay. What? When you were upset and doing that, and, you, and your, your, your feeling was 9 over 10, what, what was going through your mind? Okay. What went through your mind? What were you thinking about? Sometimes despite all this, uh, the child may still not able to tell you, okay? Next. Offer multiple choice answers. That, that's, when, that's when you offer them multiple choice questions, uh, answers. So that's, that's when you tell them, oh, uh, 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 I, I have seen other children your age, and when they get upset, uh, they, t they used to tell me is is because they have a lot of homework to do, or because they 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 feel stupid, or because the friends uh, uh, call them names, or because uh, you know the the teacher uh, criticize them. So you give them A B C D E. So for you, which one do you think is is the closest that caused you to feel so upset? So they may choose one of them or or then you put an others uh, if all all these are not then then what what is the reason in your case then it'll be easier for them to to verbalize to tell you what what is troubling them next okay now i use this with uh this can be used with kindergarten uh, Six, six years old, as well as in primary school. So when the child has been involved in some inappropriate behavior, the child is given this seat. They are asked to sit down. Okay, for obviously the kindergarten children and the year one may not be able to read. So the somebody, uh, the teacher, will sit with the child. So name and date. What happened? Okay. Right. So... I was not on task. Not on task means, all right, everyone is supposed to do something and he is not doing it, all right? Not following instructions, pushing or hitting, being dis disrespectful, okay? Right. So now, how are you feeling? You know, you are not on task, all right? Uh, usually, actually, when I use it, I change it to work. How were you feeling then? Okay, you are not on, okay, you are not on task. I was, all right, angry. Why were you angry? Because Johnny, all right, pulled my hair. Okay. So then what did you do? What did you do? I turned around and I hit him. 
Okay, now you are angry, so you turn around and hit Johnny. Now, next time, okay, what else can you do instead of hitting? Hitting, you are not allowed, you know, you're not allowed to hit others. So what can you do next time? Um, I can turn around and tell him to stop. Oh, that's a good choice, all right? So what will you say? Johnny, stop that. Okay. What about another, okay, another action? Uh, I can call the teacher and tell the teacher that Johnny pulled my hair. Very good. Okay, so you remember, okay, when you are very angry because someone has done something to you, you say, stop. You say, stop that. Then you tell the teacher. Okay? Right. And the next student will probably come in will be Johnny. Okay? So Johnny will be asked, okay, why did you, what do you do? Um, I was uh, pushing or hitting or here in this case, pulling. Okay? Uh, you pull. Okay, Peter's hair. Is that the right thing to do? No. What were you feeling at that time? Um, if it's not here, a different feeling, what else? Um, I was bored. Uh, you were bored. So you didn't, all right? And then but you, you didn't want to do your work, but you went and when you're bored, you pulled Peter's hair. Was that right? No, okay. What can you do next time? Uh, next time, yes, when you're bored, uh, I can ask for permission to have a drink. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so remember next time, yeah, what to do. Uh, next, this is, I like this sheet very much. Okay, here, think sheet. All this is the child has done something not appropriate. They are asked to do thinking. Why? Cognitive behavior therapy. Remember the, the, the cognitive circle or cognitive triad? Emotion, behavior, thought. Okay. All right, think. Uh, how were you feeling then? Okay, I was jealous. Okay. Why? Uh, because. Sandy has a new uh, pencil case. Okay, so you were jealous because Sandy had a new pillowcase. So what did you choose to do? Okay, did you go and do some behavior that is not safe? Did you push or yell or kick someone, or did you run? Did you hurt others, or were you okay unkind? Um, I was unkind. How were you unkind? I told her that her pencil case is horrible and that her, her that her, my mother will buy me a much better one. Okay, so you were unkind. Are you supposed to be unkind? No, right. So next time, what will you choose to do instead? Okay, Sandy has a new pencil case. So what will you do? You can choose to... Take a few deep breaths, okay? Take a break, go and have a drink, okay? Use a fidget spinner toy, count to 20, okay? Think, do some thinking, be kind, talk calmly. So which would you would you prefer to do? Um, I will try to talk calmly and say that, okay, she has a nice pencil case. And also, I, I, I choose to be kind. Very good. Okay. Then after that, you can ask. Okay. So, let them draw or let them write even an age on what they did. Because you, you know what happens? They also have to apologize to the other child. Huh? That's quite important. You have to teach them to apologize. Next. Okay. Dealing with ants. Once you help the child locate the thoughts, what do you do with them? Uh, Indrani already shared quite a number of things that you can do to, to change the way they think or behave, right? What is it? 
deflating powerful ants. Okay. When a child is very emotional, it's very difficult to, to change their thoughts. If they are very anxious, you, 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 you tell them that uh, school is not scary, it's difficult because the, the emotion is very powerful. And when the emotion is powerful, the, the thoughts become very stuck. So the first thing to do, if you want to change thoughts, you need to reduce the, the intensity of their emotions. So some of these ways are, are used to reduce uh, the intensity of emotions. We, we teach people like deep breathing, uh, progressive muscle relaxations. Uh, Imagery, bilateral stimulation. Okay. Uh, bilateral stimulation is they, they, they do tapping, alternate tapping on their legs or on the chest. Uh, this one came from, from EMDR techniques. Uh, quite useful for people who have uh, uh, phobias about something. Okay, Suppose they were very frightened of one fierce teacher. So get them to think of the teacher and ask them to tap uh, for a minute or two until the fear reduces. So, so these things uh, we can do with the children. Next. Next. PHQ-9, this is the Patient Health Questionnaire 9. Depression can make small problems look big. So some, some children, when they are uh, really anxious or, or difficult, it could be because of an underlying depression. We need to find out whether they are really depressed. So, uh, especially teenagers, you, you can get them to Google PHQ-9. You can get a, a automatic scoring sheet. They can do the, the questions and you can score, score for them and immediately you can tell them whether they, they are depressed or not depressed or severely depressed. So if severely depressed or moderately severe depression, uh, it would be good for them to see a doctor get some medicine if, if he has been prolonged. Next. Moving, uh, sorry, modifying ends. Three way, three things you can modify, uh, the person, the time or the space. Okay, so, so we can, you can change thoughts by, by changing, using these two, three areas, using people to change. How to use people so that this is where, this is where, uh, uh, knowing the best friend of the child comes in. Okay, suppose the, the best friend of the girl is Sally. Okay, so, so when she's angry, she throws chairs and then you can ask her, what, what will Sally do if she's angry? You think she will throw chairs? And then she will say, no, la, she won't throw. Then why won't Sally throw chairs? Uh, then she'll tell you something else. Or, or, if Sally is in your situation, if Sally was scolded by her mother, will she slam the door? No, she won't. Okay, why, why not? What, what will she be thinking? Okay, how will Sally look at this situation? Or if you know uh, that, that she's very close to her grandmother, if grandma were here, what will she think? You know, what will she be telling you if grandma were here? So you use different people to help her. Uh, come up with different ways of looking at the same situation. Okay, so this is this is where, why we do the stars and the, the, the earlier questions just now. So then time, right? Time, you can, you can change a person's thinking by changing their, the time. Suppose, suppose it is holiday now, would things be different? Would you look at it differently? Suppose, suppose you were doing this activity at night when, when everyone is at home, will you, will you be thinking differently? So, so you change the time and then the last one, you change the place. Okay, now, now it's MCO and you are doing your work in your room and you feel so tired. What, what if you were to do your work in the garden outside or you were to do the, the work upstairs or if you were to do the work in the kitchen with your mom there. So, so change, 
change place and, and ask, see what happens. Change, you can change different things and it may affect their thoughts and their feelings. Next, please. Inflating child. List down child's strength and successes to work with parents. Many children, they, they are anxious also because they have very low self-esteem. Uh, the problem with our education system is we like to point out children's faults instead of strengths. We like to look for what they do wrong, what they are no good at. We like to look for things that we can scold them about. But, but all this will, will, will cause their self-esteem to grow low lower and lower and smaller and smaller and set. when their self-esteem go too 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 low they, they they start to fear every small thing so one of the things we need to help children to do is to we need to help them build their self-esteem look watch out for things that they do well and and praise them uh there are there are nice little stamps you know with, with pretty pictures uh, that you can stamp on their notebooks. Whenever they do something nice, uh, just give them a nice stamp. Uh, praise them for small things, you know, uh, to, to build up their, their strength. So if, if parents come to see me with their child, uh, I, I, would, I will play a game with them. I, I will ask the parents, tell me one thing that you like about Jimmy. So the father will tell me one thing, then I ask the mother, mother, you tell me one thing you like about Jimmy. Then I go back to father, father, tell me another thing you like about Jimmy. Then mother, father, mother, father. By the end of the half an hour session, Jimmy will be smiling from year to year because he hears all the nice things that the father and mother has been saying. Although uh, those of you who, who has been speaking to mothers and fathers, there are many mothers and fathers that have nothing good to say about their children. It's everything bad, right? Especially when the child comes with a problem. Uh, but, but you still stick, stick to it. Lah. Yeah? The starting may be slow. Lah. There's once I asked a, a parent, tell me, tell me something good about your teenage daughter. And they, they sat there for half a minute and they couldn't come out with anything. Then I said, it could be something from long ago when she was in kindergarten or primary school. Anything, small little thing that, that you may like, that she, something that she did that made you happy. So you, can, you have to start off by going slower. But once they, their engine is started, they start telling you something positive, then you will be faster. Then they will come up with more and more. Then at the end, they will thank you for helping them see their child in a different light. Okay. Next. Using questions to guide discovery, lectures are of little use, especially with teenagers. Parents like to give lectures. Okay? Every time when we see children not doing things that they're supposed to do, uh, a voice, the voice is heard in our head. Now is the time to lecture. So we start the lecture for half an hour. Actually, it's a waste of your time and it's a waste of the children's time. Uh, might as well use the time to go and drink coffee or drink tea. Uh, lecture doesn't help. Uh, how many times after your lecture, your, your children will do what you tell them to do? So some, some one therapist says, if something doesn't work, Stop doing the same thing. Stop doing the same thing over and over again if it doesn't help you. If, if you lecture your child for every day and to, to take out the clothes to hang and he, she still doesn't hang it, then stop doing what you're doing. Lah. Why you waste your, your time and you waste everybody's time? Do something else. Do something different. Okay? Um, that I... I read in a book once. Uh, it's about children uh, disciplining teenagers. I thought I thought this was very funny. The girl, the teenage daughter, who was about 14, 15, All right, will be in the a room, but she's not doing her schoolwork. 
she's on the computer doing this, that, and everything. Every time the parents have to come up to check and monitor her, okay? And it led to a lot of screaming and shouting, and on her part, it led, it was, she was lying, all right? So uh, the father got fed up, and so what the father did was he unscrewed the whole door, okay? Her room door. He unscrewed the room door and took it away and told the daughter she is not entitled to a door because she is not responsible and they cannot trust her. So she's going to live without a, room, a door to her room until she can be trusted. Uh, it worked quite fast, apparently. Uh, I think uh, the do door was left off for two weeks. So when 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 what you do won't doesn't work, do something different. But if what something different that you do works, then continue doing what you what you do that works. Okay. So if if praising your child gets him to sweep the floor for you, then praising more, then he will sweep the floor more for you, right? Usually, especially for teenagers, consequences are important. Like, please do this. If not, this is what's going to happen. And you say it calmly, you know, you don't threaten. Okay? For instance, if the girl doesn't uh, what, bring, out, bring up the clothes and all that, so what the, the mother can do is this. The mother will hang up everybody's clothes except hers. And then, okay, the next day when she looks for clean clothes to wear, what happens? Where are my clothes? Well, since you, are, you don't want to hang up the clothes, all right? What has this got to do with automatic negative thoughts? Actually, by doing what the parent is doing, we are sending children messages. So when the, the mother hang out the clothes every time the child doesn't hang it out, the mother's message is, never mind, lah, you know, you don't have to listen to me. Uh, if you don't hang out, I will, I will hang, hang out. out. That is the message. But you have to give them a different message. If you don't hang out, that's it, you know. If you don't bring your clothes, you won't get hang out. You won't get clothes. Uh, then you won't get clothes. So, so we are actually doing, uh, changing their thoughts by, by our cha changing our own behavior. Another thing about teenagers is this, and I think it's also us. Uh, if someone asks you, you know, say your boss where once asks you to do something and they want it done now, right now, it is irritating, isn't it? Because we're in the middle of doing something else, correct? So in the same way, the teenagers are irritated. So what you do is, you give them the choice of when to do it. Okay? So I would like the house vacuumed. Okay? I would like the house vacuumed. Can you please get it done before lunch? All right? And you don't say anything until lunch. Okay? And then what you can do then is that the, your teenager comes in, uh, sits at the table, dining table, want to makan already. Have you, okay, have you vacuumed the floor? Uh, no. All right. Do you mind? Okay, please go somewhere else. What? I said the house has to be vacuumed before lunch. So now it's lunchtime. You haven't vacuumed so far. All right. You cannot sit here because you haven't vacuumed it before lunch. Yeah. All right. Next. There's a cat chasing. Uh, there's a, sorry. There's a very fierce. These are just uh, examples. Cat for you all, if you know, to to get children to 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 guess what people are thinking. So this this is one one example. Next. Uh. So sorry. Sorry. Do you mind going back? Can you give an example? What do you mean? Because there's a rat there and there's a cat. So you can ask the child, what, what do you think the rat is thinking? And what do you think the, the cat is thinking? The next is uh, two people carrying boxes. Okay, and uh, one person is having a lot of thoughts, a lot of thought bubbles. So same thing, you can do a guessing game. What do you think the person is thinking? And then you can apply to, to classroom and the teacher didn't call your name. What does she think about you? Or when you're when your, your friend is uh, not talking to you, what do you, they think about you? So some, some of them, 
some of the children feel that, oh, if nobody talks to me, means people don't like me. Then you can turn it around and say, uh, did you talk to Sally today? He said, no. Does that mean that you don't like her? And she said, no. So when people don't talk to you, does it mean they don't like you? So, so you, you, you sort of use this to, to help them think about their thoughts. Next slide. Sand tray and puppets. These are other ways to get uh, children to, to share their thoughts. So, so sometimes you can let them play the sand tray, put figurines, and then ask them to tell stories. And then ask them, what, what does a horse, what do you think the horse is thinking? Uh, so you ask questions like this. Okay. Puppets uh, as well. Yeah. Um, let me tell the story of a child who came uh, for a session with Dr. Lai, okay, and uh, Dr. Lai asked him to make a sand tray of what your, his life uh, at the moment. Uh, your world today. Uh, what is your world like, you know, your world today? So this boy is about seven years old, and uh, what he did was, he went to the sand tray uh, toy, those figurines. All right, we had con a con uh, we had some little plastic drawers, and he picked out a lot of stuff. Okay, and this is what happened. This is the tray, right? So on this end, this end of the tray, okay, this end of the tray, he went and put doll's house uh, furniture. Okay, doll's house furniture. Then he went and took some wooden blocks from a Jenga set and arranged it like a wall. So you have doll's house furniture here, then you have a wall. Okay. Now, in front of his wall, okay, in front of his wall, he had plastic soldiers. And all the plastic soldiers were appointed that way. Okay. Then, all right, there's this large space actually in front of the plastic soldiers. And he filled that whole place with snakes and spiders and Scorpion, I mean, most are uh, all the most horrible animals, like basically. Okay, now, what do you think he means with that tray? Dollhouse furniture, wooden blocks, okay, soldiers, and then off horrible creatures. Do you think he was very happy? Or was he feeling sad? Why sad? Because there are creatures there and there are soldiers, all right? And then scared? Yes. So can I tell you actually his background? Mum and dad are separated, okay? Uh, Mum, father has left the house, but as and when he likes, he will come to the house and start banging on the gate and shouting and yelling. Okay? So, how does the boy feel about this? Obviously, the boy felt that his family, eh, all right, are not secure. All right? Not secure because there's also creatures trying to catch him. And he has to have soldiers protecting the family. And actually, who are the soldiers protecting him from? All those creatures are his father. So this is an example of using play therapy techniques to do CBT. Okay, next. <clears throat> ah, these are what they call uh, over in... Um, Australia, St. Luke, from the Gospel of Luke, St. Luke's cards, which are used for work with children, okay? Now, for older kids, you can have St. Luke's, let's talk, and there are some questions here for the children, okay? For this strength cards is what, what we are trying to do, is that you're trying, you use this to teach the children, okay? I am calm, your feelings, I can try my best. Over here, there are some cards. It's a bear family. It's a few more than this, actually. And what happens is that uh, they use the kids will use this to make stories. 
Okay, or you can look at it and say, how do you how do you think this bear feels? All right. Uh, there, there are actually different sets of same new cards. Another one is the ups and downs, so the problems. Okay, so there'll be floods. Okay, you can order them from things. online. Yeah, you can order them online. <clears throat> I think there are about 104 ringgit per box online. Um, bookdepository.co.uk. Book depository. Okay, thanks. Next. Choices and options for adolescents. Yeah. Uh, just also an another tips. When you're working with teenagers, don't tell them what to do. Give them choices. Okay? We can, we can have this or this. Which one would you like? So give them choices. They, they like it. Because they, they are growing up, they like to be treated like adults. Uh, give them choices. The story of the perfect letter T. Okay, I think this is the last two slides. This one, I think many of you may have already heard the story. Uh, for those who haven't heard, uh, this is a story, a real, real, real incident that happened to Dr. Milton Erickson, a psychiatrist uh, who lived last, last decade. Uh, what? Uh, no, no, last, last century. <laughs> In the 19 plus plus uh what, what happened was he every every evening he will go and fetch his son from primary school and his uh, son's good friend john will go and and tumpang his car to go home so one one evening he saw john coming into the car very gloomy and sad so he asked his son what happened to john today so the son told him today the Teacher asked John to go and stand in front of the class, took out his exercise book and told the whole class that this is the worst handwriting I have ever seen in my life. And everybody laughed and John was very sad. And what Dr. Erickson did was, he said, John, let me see your exercise book. So John reluctantly let him see and he turned the pages and the first thing that came from his mouth was, this is a perfectly written T. The T, you know, the T, the letter T. The top touches the top line, the bottom touches the bottom line, and the middle line is right on the middle line. This is a perfectly written T, and he passed it back to John. John's eyes open. Look at the T, and it's really well written. All the other letters were very badly written, but T was very well written. And he did this every day. Every day when John comes into a car, he says, show me your exercise book. And he will hunt for the, the best written letters and you tell John, this is a very well written A. And that is a very well written N. That's all he says. And give it back to him. Every day he does the same thing. You know, at the end of the year, John got a medal for the best handwriting in class. What message did Dr. Erickson gave John? Dr. Erickson didn't give the message that you are uh, the worst writer, worst handwriting person boy in, in the world. John, Dr. Erickson gave him a message that you can, you can write a good letter. You, you have the, uh, the, the potential to write good letters. You wrote a perfect T. And every day he supported that message. You are able to write better. And at the end, he changed his thought, negative thought of I am the worst uh, boy with the worst handwriting to I am able to write the best handwriting in class. Yeah. Actually, uh, many teachers unconsciously, all right, tear away uh, their children's self-esteem, their students' self-esteem and self-confidence with the words. And you must know one thing, you know, when, the, when uh, this poor uh, was it, John's teacher said, this is the worst handwriting I have ever since, seen since I started teaching. When you say like something like that, what is the effect? Does it help the child to improve? It doesn't, isn't it? 
So why say it? What could be more helpful would be, okay, John, you really need to improve your handwriting because, all right, if the teachers, now teachers, next time when you're working, your boss cannot read what you're writing, all right, you will not be able to communicate with anyone and you definitely won't be able to do your exams next time. What do you think, okay, we can do about it? Or you may say, okay, how can I help you to improve your handwriting? Next one. You need to practice though. All right, that's not, we, are, we are so used okay. to negative. I think words. this is the last story, yeah. the last slide. How the words of a teacher changed my life. Elliot Connie. Solution focused therapist from America. Elliot Connie is a famous famous uh, solution focused uh, therapist. If if you like uh, solution focus to know more about solution focused therapy, you just Google and type his name, and he gives a lot of free stuff online. Um, he he is a a, a a black okay a black in from America, and uh, he he's he's he is a uh, Academically, he's not very good. So he uh, he nearly dropped out from school, and he never thought he will he will uh, survive college or, or university. But one day, one day, a teacher uh, who gave them uh, his class an assignment asked him to see him. So he said, "Finish, okay." Every time teachers ask to see him, means he's dead. That means he has done something really, really bad. Um, so the teacher asked him to see him. He went in front of the class. He said, sir, I, uh, you asked to see me. Then he says, come, idiot, follow me. And then he walked with uh, the teacher back to his office. And then the uh, idiot was uh, uh, trembling as he walked. And, and then in his office, the teacher sat down. He says, I, I read all the essays of your, your classmates. But yours is the best written essay. Why don't you be consider being a writer? That was the first time any teacher has complimented him. Why don't you consider being a writer? And and after that day, he he his thinking about academia changed. At, at first, he thought he was going to be a school dropout, but, but after that day, he started studying and. Today he is a he's a solution focused therapist and he, he actually goes on telling people his story. How how our negative thoughts can can destroy us, but how people can change our thoughts and turn us around. Okay. His, his negative thought was I will never survive college. I will, you know, I always definitely fail. But this teacher just by one word saying, you are a good writer, why don't you consider being a writer? Changed him and then says, my teacher says I'm good, so I must be, you know, there must be possibilities for me. Okay, I think that's all. Remember, our mouth, okay, can give life or death. Please choose. Thank you very much. I'll pass the time back to um, Grace. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tin and Dr. Uh, sorry, thank you, Dr. Lai and Dr. Indrani. I think all of us are very beneficial from this sharing. Uh, we not only learn how to teach the children deal with their negative thoughts. I think as a parents, as a uh, lecturers or as an educator, we also need to learn how we deal with their emotions. Our attitudes also will affect how our children's uh, behaviors. Correct. So uh, let me check whether there's a there's questions in our chat box. Okay. Uh, I think so far no questions. I think everyone is uh, thankful. Okay, I think this is a very great sharing to us. 
So once again, thank you, Dr. Lai and Dr. Indranim. So okay. before we before we end our sessions, so others, uh, this is just a reminder. There's a, a digital certificates link that posted in our chat box. Okay, please register yourself, and my colleagues will send the certificates to all of you within the fourteen days. So thank you, Dr. Lai and Dr. Indranim. Again, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.